as James Carter TV here to recap the Super Bowl 49 preview between the Green Bay Packers and the New England Patriots. Or well, that's the BS I've been fed all week, and you've been fed all week because I mean this game has been alluded to being the Super Bowl preview, and I'm saying okay, yes, both of these teams are playing well, and we don't trust Arizona to make it to the Super Bowl. We don't trust Philly or Dallas, We and then Denver is not looking as good, but I don't care, because uh, welcome to the NFL, people. This is a league where even though it appears as if teams are in the route to the Super Bowl, something, someone will prevent things from happening the way we believe them to happen. Nobody saw the Baltimore Ravens winning the Super Bowl two years ago. Well, I mean, I did. I picked them. Um, but that was a very lonely case. I was all the way over here in this corner. Everybody was picking all the Packers, the Patriots, your Broncos. And I was over here saying, hey, look at the Ravens. And I was right. Okay, but the thing is, still, you don't know in this league. I, I know... It appears as if they're great, that they're, they're going to go there, blah, blah. but who knows, man? Maybe Philadelphia is going to the Super Bowl. We don't know. Maybe you're going to get hot. You're going to go to the Super Bowl. They're hot right now. Maybe Dallas is going to catch, catch up again. All it takes is one team, one game in the playoffs to get rid of the Super Bowl preview junk. Okay, so I'm not even going to begin to believe any of that nonsense. But these are two great teams. I'll give you that. I'll give you that these are two great teams going at it on uh, national television pretty much because pretty much everybody had this game um, and what we saw was a, a great game it was a great game a great contest between the Patriots and the Packers but the Patriots came up short and mainly I got me I go back to the Rob Gronkowski uh, drop in the end zone this guy dropped a touchdown in the end zone with a little over three minutes left in the football game you catch that the game uh, is now in the Patriots' favor. I mean, hell, the Packers still could have won the game, but at least you're leading going into the last two minutes, three minutes of the game. But he dropped it. And then from there, Steven Gostowski missed a field goal. I don't even care about that, really, because the point is the Patriots cannot stop the Packers' run game. Anytime the Packers want, or not even run game, just third down conversions. Every time the Packers wanted a third down conversion, they got it, except for when they were in the red zone. That was the only time when the Pat when Patriots defense woke up and decided to get a stop. But uh, all night long or morning, whatever, the afternoon, whatever, the Packers would go straight down the field, almost every single drive, and then they would stall in the, in, in the red zone. So that showed me on this last drive of the Packers, I mean, they're going to get this first down. Why? Because the Patriots can't stop them. I mean, they're at least going to go down and get a first down here. Um, so believing that the Patriots were going to stop them, I, I believe, was just foolish. I mean, I, I thought they should have went for it on fourth down. I, I know he, Brady got sacked. And, well, it was like 4th and 16, but I thought they should, still should have gone for it because I, I did not see any scenario where the Patriots' defense would have stopped the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers had his way all night long. He was sacked once or twice, but mainly clean pockets, and I trusted him to get that first down. I mean, come on. You listen to yourself. You're telling, you're telling yourself, Bill Belichick, you're saying, hey, Let's give the ball back to Aaron Rodgers. That's the dumbest move you can ever make. Don't do that. If you need to go for it on 4th and 16, do it. Because you cannot give the ball, the ball back to the best football player in the world. You can't do it to me. He's great. He is wonderful. And I said going in, he is my number one quarterback in the world. Um, this guy is absolutely phenomenal, Aaron Rodgers. And I, some people try to tell me Peyton Manning. Well, no. See, this game this game shows you why Aaron Rodgers is able to transcend his team to the next level to win football games. And he was absolutely superb. But I need to see another Super Bowl. I know he's won one as recent as 2010, but... It's time to get deep in the play. Maybe not even win the Super Bowl. Just get back to the Super Bowl. I mean, your playoff record has been terrible. I, let's be honest. You've been out of the first round. Uh, well, not out of the first round, but your first game you've been out for the past three years now. So, you, you, come on. What are you doing? You, you, uh, you need to get back to the playoffs at, 
and win. Okay, the, remember, okay, after the Super Bowl win, they went 15 and 1. 15 and 1. Lost to the New York football giants, Eli Manning, 97. A year after that, lost to the Colin Kaepernick's. Okay, and then year after that, they lost to the Colin Kaepernick's again. I mean, come on, Aaron Rodgers. It's time to start showing up in the playoffs. I know you got that Super Bowl ring. I know you're the best quarterback in the league. But there's one thing we care about in this sport, in any sport, and that's rings. That's championships, baby. And you need to start getting back to getting close to winning another one because you haven't been close lately. So let's get close again. Um, but there you go. I mean, pa pa Packers are great. Patriots are great, too. Um, but you, you went on the road in Green Bay and you lost. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing shameful there. Um, I'm going to go around the league and talk about some stuff that happened today, which I found to be ridiculous. Wow, what a day. The Ravens. I, I, I liked the Ravens to win the AFC North. Assuming that they beat New Orleans last week, and they beat New Orleans, but then at home they can't take care of business again. I mean, they lost to the Bengals week one at Baltimore, and now they lost to the Chargers at Baltimore. And their defense, that last drive, I mean, what was that? This is not the Ravens' defense. The Ravens' defense would have made sure to get these Charger punks off the field. You're telling me guys like Elvis Duberville, Terrell Suggs, Haloti Nada, can get past this Chargers offensive line and sack Phillip Rivers. That's just ridiculous. I mean, these guys are trotting out King Dunlap, DJ Fluker. You can't go through these guys and get a sack? Come on. That's a little ridiculous right now. So I, I found that to be ridiculous. I, I still project the Ravens to make the playoffs, but this is just a terrible loss for them. Steelers. I, well, I, these guys love to sleep against terrible teams, and it's actually pretty ridiculous and preposterous. Um, they need to win next week, and they're going to Cincinnati, and that's very tough, but you need to win because you're starting to slide, and this playoff spot's going to go bye-bye. You're never going to see it again. It's time to win a football game. Um, you can't lose at home against New Orleans, the terrible New Orleans Saints, who are somehow going to win the NFC North by default. I mean, how are you going to lose at home to these punks? 35-32, uh, it, was, it was more than that. I mean, they just scored a touchdown and a field goal convert or a two-point conversion to end the game to make this score seem better than it actually was. But the Steelers sunk, uh, the period. The Bengals, they won on the road and got a victory. I don't care. You're facing the terrible Buccaneers, and you should have lost. But Marvin Lewis cheated, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this guy threw a challenge flag under two minutes. I've never seen anything like that before in my entire life. Um... So there was that. The Panthers stink. And I expected this. Remember, I said going in. I what? I need to I need to tweet this guy actually. I, I this guy after week three, I told this guy. Or actually week four. This guy was like, Oh, Panthers are great. I said, No, you guys suck. You just don't realize it yet. The offensive talent you guys have is putrid, and you're going to see that be displayed into the season. And now I hope he sees that, and I'm sure he does, because the Panthers suck. Uh, wow, the Raiders, uh, they're back to, God knows, the, one of the worst teams ever. How you was 52-0 to zero to Sean Hill and Trey Mason? I mean, that's really the, who these people have on offense. Who are these people? Now, Trey Mason, I love, though. He was my number one running back draft prospect, and I was criticized for this. But I said, hey, this guy is producing extremely well in college, and I look, I look at this guy, I see pro-style running back in this guy, and I was criticized for this, but boom, he's the best right now, he's the best running back rookie right now, he's the best, um, so I like my rankings there, the Jaguars beat the Giants, wow, I, Eli Manning, it's t if I'm the Giants, I'm, I'm building it from the bottom, first of all, I'm going after Jim Harbaugh, Okay, because Tom Coughlin needs to be out of there. He needs to retire. He needs to be fired. He needs to be something. Um, but I'm going after Jim Harbaugh, who, um, to me, I, is great. And I think he could, I mean, really rebuild the Giants from the ground up because they need it. Uh, the Giants and the Jets. It's time to rebuild in New York, gentlemen. But they're probably going to hold on to Eli. They're probably going to wait that they're hoping this guy can do something, but he won't. Um, and then they'll realize that maybe next year or the year after that, and then they'll finally draft their next quarterback. I mean, that was all that's pretty much interesting. I'm going to make a video on my terrible Titans later, and that's going to be a lot of fun. But until next time, James Carter TV, I'm out. Peace.